This is the Veteran Patton, the Veteran Sherman S, and the Veteran Lynx. How do they compare? What do I think? What are my feelings after a lot of time and miles on the Veteran Lynx? Tune in and find out. So obviously there's a lot of similarities between these three wheels, a, a lot of similarities between the Patton and the Lynx. And I haven't really talked about uh, some of the features on the Lynx in detail. So I'm gonna do that quickly before I, I talk about my overarching feelings about things. Uh, both the Patton and the Lynx have a, abandoned the, the crappy trolley handle and have gone with a more conventional, the, the crappy trolley handle that was on the Sherman S. They're going with a more conventional trolley handle, which uh, I think is an improvement. Seems to work fine. Locks into place and releases just fine. Same, same, uh, exact same uh, display and control arrangement as the other wheels. Like the Veteran Patton, it has the hold the toe hold down, which I wound up using uh, more than expected, especially when I went down the 26 stairs. It also has a similar kickstand um, I think, it, yeah, it looks like it might be slightly wider than what's on the Patton. It's very, very stable, very stable. So the kickstand gets high marks, a, a good comprehensive mud guard. When I was inadvertently stuck in that, that flooded out path, um, although my feet got wet because of water uh, coming up the front, nothing came up the back and the mud guard did a good job of keeping me dry, at least on my ass. One thing that's definitely better here is access to the charge ports. Now, unlike the Patton, the charge ports are more accessible on this wheel. And unlike the Patton who, that has them in the front and this low handle grab makes it annoying as hell to try to get a charger in unless you get that 3D printed um, little piece that I've, I've done a video on to make it easier to stick it in. Otherwise, it's a pain in the ass. These, these, this gets in the way, it sucks. On the Lynx, they've moved the charge ports back to the rear and you no longer have issues getting to them. The only thing that's a little annoying with it being in the back is you know, on the Patton, when you put it on the kickstand, you have access to the charge ports. With the Lynx, because the kickstand's in the back, obviously, you need to kind of plug the charger in and then lean it back on the kickstand, a minor thing. I would trade the, the better access to the ports for, uh, for convenience. It's just, it's just, it's a much better solution. Uh, pedals between the Lynx and the Patton, they, they, they're almost identical. Uh, it looks slightly different, but they're, they're very, very close. Um, and this one, my Lynx has the road tire similar to what my Patton has, and I am a fan of the road tire. Uh, the light, again, is very similar to all three wheels headlight, although you can get third-party lights. The taillight treatment on the Lynx is slightly different. It's fine, you know, the Patton has two circles, the Lynx has two whatever shape you want to call those things, but uh, I, nev I neither uh, disapprove or approve of them, they're fine. They're, uh, they're not a big deal. Oh, uh, let's see, can you see me? Um, I think you can, yes, I believe you can see me. All right, so let's talk about some of the differences. The, oh, some minor differences. They, all three wheels use a, vim, a very similar fast ace suspension. The difference with the Lynx is it has the progressive spring, uh, which in uh, some situations can give you support for both aggressive jumping and drops and more minor you know, undulations in the road and the terrain. So uh, this has progressive suspension. Progressive spring, I believe you can get that spring for the Lynx, or I'm sorry, for the Patton as well. You can get the progressive spring. Uh, my Patton only has a 58 pound spring in it. This one has a 66 pound spring in it, um, which I didn't know until actually Jason told me this. Uh, when you pop off this cover up top here, it actually tells you what, what the, uh, the shock is. And this is a 66 pounder. Uh, I've heard a lot of people getting the 70 pound uh, shock. Uh, when I first got this, I did, I did need to uh, soften up the suspension. It felt a little stiff to me. Uh, once I did that, it, some of the issues I had with wobbling and comfort uh, were, were alleviated. Uh, it, both things got better when I softened up the, the shock settings. The, the biggest difference, well, there's a couple big differences. Of course, the form factor is a big difference. That is technically a 16 inch wheel. This is technically a 20 inch wheel. So it's a bigger wheel, uh, but it weighs almost the same. I, actually, I think it weighs exactly the same as, um, as the Patton, which is, which is hard to believe. 
Uh, but it does, uh, it does weigh about the same. So even though it is a bigger form factor wheel, it still handles well. Um, it definitely handles better than the Sherman S. I never uh, got the feeling of it, that this, the Lynx was you know, unmanageable or uh, difficult to handle. Although I do still think that the Patton feels more agile just because it's a, it's a smaller diameter tire. But the Lynx is, is a still very agile for its size. The Lynx has 151.2 uh, volt power system, whereas the uh, Patton is 126 volts. So uh, one of the areas where this is, excels is it is fast, has a lot of power, has a lot of torque. Uh, when I did my top speed run uh, the other day, I was up to just under 47 miles an hour and it did not beep. That was in high speed mode. Uh, so this wheel is very fast. It has more power than the Patton uh, and more top end. That being said, the Patton is still torquey and fast, especially for a 16 inch wheel. So now that one of the things that I got a lot of attention on with my test was the rain. When I did my range test on, let's go back to the patent. When I did my range test on the patent, I got almost exactly 50 miles uh, without turning on long range mode. Um, for that um, range test, it was very similar to the Lynx as far as speed goes. I went the same, the same course and I was doing 30 miles an hour for uh, the vast majority of that ride. And then as the battery got lower, I had to drop it down into the 20s. With the Lynx, I did the exact same course, add a little bit of mileage at the end, and I wound up getting 55 miles on the Lynx, but I had long range mode enabled. If I did not turn on long range mode, I probably would have wound up right around 50 miles, just like I did with the Patton. This is a 2700 watt hour battery. That's a 2200 watt hour battery. And so my, you know, my, my simple thinking was, okay, 500 more watt hours, I should get more range. Uh, real world, it was pretty similar to me. Now I've heard uh, Marty saying that, that he, he can get 65 miles, riding slower obviously, and with long range mode enabled. I'm sure if, if I had long range mode on it uh, from the get go and I kept my speed more in the mid 20s, you know, 25-ish, uh, I could probably at least get 60, I'm sure, but I could also do that on the Patton as well. So to me, uh, range-wise, these wheels are pretty similar, more so than I thought they would be. But I mean, f for most people, 50 miles is plenty of range, so it's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. With the Lynx, I did my, my biggest uh, amount of stairs ever. I did a 26 stair uh, drop, which I never attempted on any of my other wheels. Uh, most I did prior was maybe you know four or five uh, you know baby steps, so that was that was something. The pedals, the pedals I mentioned the pedals earlier that they're like the Patton. The pedals I found to be very very comfortable on my range test. Um, I never experienced uh, significant foot discomfort, which um, surprised me. You know, the pedals might not be the grippiest. You know if, if you need extremely grippy uh, pedals, you know the, these are not screw in spikes. Uh, they're a little bit rounded, but at least for comfort, they, they were definitely comfortable for me. So if you're looking for comfort, the stock pedals are pretty good. As you can see, the Lynx uh, has no pads on it. Uh, one of the prior testers covered it in Velcro, so you can pad it up as much as you want. I'm just never the type that I require pads for the kind of riding that I typically do, so I did not bother to uh, move the pads from the Sherman S over. Um, but obviously you'll get the most performance out of the wheel, both accelerating and braking if you put a set of uh, pads on it. So the question that, that I'm asked uh, all the time on, on the comment section of my videos that I've done on the links is, all right, well, okay, Duff, so what is, what is the better wheel? Is, is the Lynx better? Is the Patton better? Is the Sherman S better? To me, the answer Almost always when I'm asked what the best wheel is, it all depends on what you want out of a wheel. If you want the fastest wheel, if you want the most torque, if you want a wheel with more um, suspension geometry, with more, more travel in the suspension, it's obviously, obviously gonna be the length. If you're looking for a more agile wheel, if you're, if you're looking to spend less money, approximately $1,000 less, with a wheel that has uh, the capability to go Quite quick for a 16 inch wheel, handle great, durable, and uh, a suspension with slightly less travel, 
But if that's okay with you, then then the, to me, the Patton is, is a fine wheel. Uh, if you need maximum range of these three wheels, if you need maximum range, it's the Sherman S. So my range test in the Sherman S, I got uh, 70 miles without going into any, any sort of long range mode. So, and that has, you know, that has a 3,600 watt hour battery. So if you're looking for maximum range, that is your wheel. Uh, I love the Sherman S. When I, when I first got the Sherman S, I declared that my favorite wheel. Then when I got the Patton, I declared that my favorite wheel. Um, now that I had the Lynx, I declare the Patton my favorite wheel. <laughs> it not, and it has nothing to do with the Lynx, the Lynx uh, having having anything significant wrong with it. It's just to, for my needs. Um, like like if I if I didn't already have a Patton or Sherman S, and I, I was presented with these three wheels. I would pick the Lynx. If I could only have one wheel, I would pick the Lynx. But the fact that I already have a patent, uh, what it offers me for the type of rider I am, I don't need cutting edge performance, uh, cutting edge torque, cutting edge speed. I, I don't need that. So for me, the patent is more than sufficient and it costs you know, approximately $1,000 less. But if this is a blank slate and I was picking one of these uh, three wheels, I would pick the Lynx because it's, you know, it's, it's the, the best choice out there and I wouldn't have already spent uh, you know, between seven and eight thousand dollars on other wheels, <laughs> I could just spend it all on the Lynx. So, yeah, Lynx is is a great great wheel, um, but just because of my situation, I'm good with the patent. So if I if I compare the Lynx to other high end wheels that I've tested recently, the V13. Uh, the EX30. How do how do I feel that the Lynx is against those wheels? With both of those wheels, if I if I had to pick out of those three wheels, I would pick a Lynx. The greater power, uh, similar, uh, actually better range than the V13. Very fast, faster than the V13. I, this is the fastest speed I ever clocked uh, on any of my speed tests on the Lynx. Yes, I did double check that. So yeah, the, the Lynx really is best in class. Now the question is gonna be, okay, so when the, when the Bugatti uh, ET Max hits the streets, is that gonna be the new king? I mean, spec wise, it, it beats the Lynx, but you know, who knows? Who knows what reality will be? But right now, I would say the Lynx is king of the hill. If you have a blank slate and you're looking for uh, best wheel in class in, in multiple areas, I would say that the Lynx is, uh, is your wheel. All right, so I mean that really kind of wraps up my feelings on the wheel. I've been very impressed with it. It's a it's a comfortable wheel. It's a fast wheel. It's a powerful wheel. It gets it gets respectable range, and um, and it seems to be built very well. It appears to be. Big thanks to Jason at eWheels for including me in the testing circuit. This is their demo wheel. I'm not sure uh, what fate this wheel has uh, next. I'm not sure where it's going next, if anywhere. Uh, I will I will find that out. But I've been very uh, happy with my experience with the links. And um, if you have any further questions about it, feel free to um, hit me up. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it the best that I can. And yes, the links does fit on the EUC Army stands, by the way, just FYI. All, well, all these wheels do. All the veteran wheels do. The new veteran wheels do. So if you're looking for an inexpensive stand for your um, new, new generation veteran wheel, keep it your house. Um, check it out, eucarmy.com. So I think that's it, guys. If you found this video series interesting, please think about giving it a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're gonna subscribe, you can hit the notify bell, which is over there somewhere. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. What do you think about the links? I got a lot of people that have been saying, hey, I'm thinking about getting a links. I'm thinking about getting a links. It, it's, it definitely is, is a very popular choice among new wheel buyers uh, currently, for sure, and justifiably so. If you have any questions, suggestions, uh, yeah, throw those my way. At and um, I think that's all I have for you. I hope you have a great week this week. Right, right now it's what? It's Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Hope the rest of your week is great. That's all I have for now. Until next time, duck me out. I mean, how lucky am I to have not one, not two, but all three of veteran suspension wheels under my roof at the same time. Pretty damn lucky if you ask me.